Welcome back to Roundhouse Radio, 98.3. I'm Kirk LaPointe. I'm your host every night between 6 and 8 o'clock. We're uh, continuing, we're actually concluding uh, the series of 11 Vancouver area ridings. It has been uh, a pleasant kind of marathon to, uh, to wage in all of this. I've been really privileged to have the time, the generous time of the candidates, the principal candidates in uh, our, um, our election, our provincial election, of course, on Tuesday. And this half hour, we're talking to two candidates in the Mount Pleasant riding. Melanie Mark is the NDP MLA in the riding. Jerry Crawl is the Green Party candidate. Uh, we had also extended an invitation to Connie Lynn from the Liberal Party, and she chose uh, toward the last minute to, uh, to take a pass on our discussion today. Uh, so be it. Um, when we uh, finished our conversation before the break, I, I wanted to get around to uh, what it is that you're hearing as you knock on doors, ring doorbells. Uh, what is it that people are craving from their government? What do they feel are the answers, the solutions that governments can provide? Jerry, why don't you start with me on that one? Yeah, sure. Uh, when I started uh, the campaign, I opened up a campaign office in Kingsgate Mall, which is truly the central hub for convergence in uh, Vancouver, Mount Pleasant. And my, my background as a socially responsible business person, uh, industrialist, building clean electric cars, uh, helping transportation, which is what Andrew Weaver has appointed me as a spokesperson for transportation. I was shocked at what was walking in the door. Uh, people, a constant flow of people from Vancouver, Mount Pleasant, without food, without mm -hmm. shelter, mm -hmm. and without recourse not even be able to find the NDP constituency office uh, in Vancouver, Mount Pleasant. And the lack of accountability for that, just people on their own, that has been a, a huge eye-opener. I think we see it at, at Hastings in Maine, but it's everywhere. It's everywhere. And there are numbers that would shock anybody, thousands of people, desperate, So what are the answers money. that they're looking for out of, out of a, a, a new MLA? Well, again, it's not just the MLA, it's the leadership. You have okay. two old, tired parties bickering with each other. Nobody likes either leader. And in the middle, you have a great person who's a Nobel laureate and a very likable person. That's the way you get things done. By having people not writing letters about uh, a tragedy of uh, aging out of foster care, but by providing a guaranteed minimum income for the people who age out of foster care okay. and actual safety net. That's in the platform. And that's something that's been totally lacking over 26 years. The only thing they can do is copy Andrew Weaver's platform. They can't actually do it themselves. It's time for a change. Melanie Mark. Uh, sorry. This just feels like a little bit of comic relief. Um, your question is about what are people saying at the door. Um, I, When you're a candidate, you have the privilege to knock on people's doors and you get to see the conditions that they're living in. I've knocked on doors for the by-election, uh, which was last year in February. I've seen the conditions up up the hill of Mount Pleasant, people that are living in homes, people that are living in SRO conditions, single room occupancy conditions, yeah. people that are living, you know, seven people to a two bedroom suite, people that are afraid to speak up because they're going to get rent evicted, people that are working two or three jobs, parents that feel like sh ships in the night because they aren't seeing their children, they don't have proper childcare. Uh, the fentanyl crisis has really posed a huge impact on the community. Trauma is affecting all of the frontline responders, the volunteers, everyone that's trying their best to save lives. So it looks like a crisis. There's a lot of crises going on throughout Mount Pleasant and people are feeling the pinch. They don't feel like the government has had their interests at heart. They feel like they've been left behind. They feel like unless they've got, you know, the money to have access to the premier, their, their lives aren't going to get better. Uh, so I would have to say housing's the number one issue. Child care definitely up there. And the fentanyl issue is one that people want to get a handle on. They want to know that pe our, our colleagues, our peers, our neighbours aren't going to die uh, from any more, and any more overdoses. Those are the pressing, press, pressing issues um, that people have talked to me about throughout Mount Pleasant. Um, as an MLA, that's a different story of what comes through your door, but those are the three issues. Saving our schools, yeah. you know, we advocated to save schools because there wasn't enough money from Christy Clark for the last 16 years in public education. We had to rally and get petitions and lobby the school board to save our schools. That has a huge, is a huge stressor in families that are thinking, oh my God, where are my kids going to go if this school shuts down? I want to um, ask both of you about... Uh, 
you know, Melanie, you're a relatively recent uh, campaigner in a certain sense because you you got you, you got the uh, position in the by election um, as we've heard 62 weeks ago. Uh, what has surprised you in the campaign? What has surprised you this time around? Oh, well, people clearly, I mean, I don't know how many campaigns there are, but ABC, anything but Clark, anything but Clark, anything but Clark. And of course, I'm asking them to vote for Melanie Mark. And there's a lot of enthusiasm out there. People know my name. They know where I've come from and the story of my childhood and my youth and that I've been an advocate. People want change. They're hungry for change. Um, but, you know, I, I love surpri- campaigning. Does that surprise you? Does it surprise me? Yeah. No, I think people have been waiting for a very long time to get rid of Christy Clark and their values, right? The values about leaving people behind. So you're surprised at the depth of that? I, oh, I'm not surprised. Okay. I yeah, I'm I'm actually surprised. I'm still surprised looking that for a no- surprise from you there, Melanie. Okay, but a that's surprise a- for me? Well, no, I, I think I think it's a given in this area that people don't want people like Christy Clark representing them in okay. the legislature. Gary Crawl, what what has surprised you out there? Yeah, I have a surprise for the NDP. It's coming on May the 9th when Vancouver Mount Pleasant turns from orange to green, it does make a difference when you're pointing towards the leadership. Anything but Clark, that's good. But I think I speak on behalf of all British Columbians that were not prepared to have four years of NDP. We all remember what happened. And we can see it happening right here in Vancouver Mount Pleasant. And I really think through both NDP and Liberal governments in Vancouver Mount Pleasant, it it hasn't been pleasant. Not at all. And to and uh, uh, it is time for substantive change. It's time for uh, change that's based on evidence and not making things up. And I think that having a solid platform is the way to go. And I think people want to see that happen. Right. That's the that's the surprise I think we'll have in store uh, okay, for so, uh So I'm going to pose a, a final question to both of you then. Um, let's say you're elected on Tuesday. Let's say that your leader either is the premier, premier. or... Uh, in the case of the Greens, I think you know all of the statistics indicate that the perhaps the polls, perhaps that uh, uh, the Green Party may hold a bit of a balance of power if there were, say, a minority government in this case. So, what's your first bit of advice to your leader? Well, uh, I'm here representing the people of Vancouver Mount Pleasant, so our ongoing discussion and our mandate has been to win a majority green government for British Columbia I'm and not make try- substantive I'm, I'm absolutely difference. not trying to be dismissive of it. Yeah. But, and I do believe that's but, possible. But let's, let's go likely. with the other, the other scenario, the scenario in which you hold some kind of balance of power. What would be your advice to your leader about what to do now? Who to support, for instance? That, that hasn't even been, been brought to the attention. Uh, that, that's not even on the table right now. So there are things, there's, there's crises. And we just heard from the you, NDP your candidate. Leader, your leader was asked about it yesterday. I yeah. mean, he, he, he addressed it in a certain way. In the same way that yeah. I am. The NDP candidate has gone through a menu of things that have happened in Mount Pleasant over the last 26 years. She's spelled out every single reason why the NDP has to be removed. Every single one of these problems okay, so has occurred during so the 26 years. So your advice then to your leader, what's the first thing that you would advise him? Be the do? best premier you can be put in these fine people we have in in every single category that we have, six PhDs, teachers, doctors, uh, architects, for housing, childcare, and all that. Be the best premier you can be. Be evidence-based for your decision-making instead of what we see, a $200 million giveaway for tolls to increase traffic in Vancouver. That's decision-based evidence-making. That has to stop. And Andrew Weaver and the Green Party are the, are the group that can make that happen. All right, Melanie Mark, let's let's uh, let's suggest that you're reelected then on Tuesday, and that you've got a Premier Horgan in place. What's your bit of advice? What, what do you bring to him first as a to do item? Well, our platform uh, has three components, right? Making life more affordable for people, better services, the things that we care about, and good sustainable jobs. So my advice, of course, would be to stay true to your promise, Um, value the people that got you elected, crisscross this province as much as you can. I was just up north, you know, in my Niska territory where salmon and fishing and logging, all of those things are really important uh, to northern and rural communities. 
So I think it's very important that John has a, a balance of pr uh, presence throughout the province. And I just want to add to uh, my friend here, because I, I don't understand why the Greens keep you fighting are, you are the NDP. You are friends, right? Well, I, I don't understand the no? fight against the NDP from the Green Party, when really it's about Christy Clark, who has for 16 years made the decisions in this province. You know, I, I respect other people that want to run for office, but we're not the ones who've made the May decisions. It's Christy Clark. Pardon me, I didn't interrupt you. I just want to give a voice to the people it's that good, are curious why the, the Greens are so <clears throat> allergic to the NDP instead of the Liberals, who have made so many decisions, left so many people behind. Okay. And, you know, yeah. they're, they're, and I just want to add before my, pardon me? Yeah. You know, that respect is, is, is something, that's the truth and reconciliation we're talking about in our platform, right? Respect, sitting down, having a conversation, listening to one another. Um, that's where I want to go. And that's what I'm going to remind John. I'm going to remind John Horgan when he's the premier on May 9th. All right. I'm going to give you last comment on this, Jerry, sure. and, uh, and, and narrowly do yeah. it because we're <clears> running out of time. It's not just the Green Party that's allergic to the NDP and John Horgan. It's all of British Columbia. To have a leader of her party, and I have to question a person that would work for such a leader, commenting that the Liberal Party and Christy Clark cannot be trusted for taking campaign funds and then doing the exact same thing without transparency in a, in a, a world-class fashion, record fashion, and not just having the campaign being run by the United Steelworkers, that's Grounds for disqualification. That's why all of British Columbia is allergic to the color orange. All right. We have to break it off there. I'm sorry. These conversations move so swiftly in this half hour. Congratulations to both of you for stepping forward. Uh, it's not an easy thing to do. I've tried it once, and I'm, I've got the welts to show for it. And um, I want to thank you for your time today. You've been both very generous for coming in uh, on, this, uh, on this day. And uh, as I say, good luck on Tuesday. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Jerry sir. Kroll of the Green Party, Melanie Mark of the NDP. And Thank you for having us. And you're listening to Roundhouse Radio 98.3. I'm Kirk LeBond.